Hello everyone, this is Kaga. Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a little bit of a different format because, you know, life's busy. Eh, but this is a good replay for you all. This is, a, as you can see, a replay from World of Warships. And this is all about the low-tier destroyer in the U.S. Navy tech tree called the USS Wix. And there's no better way to get this across other than to say this is perhaps one of the finest seal clubbing instruments known to warships at the moment. Now you're all sitting there thinking about it going, wait a minute, Japanese destroyers rule the roost through the tiers because their torpedoes are better, right? Well, just having better torpedoes doesn't necessarily mean it's a good seal clubbing instrument. As you're probably going to see in this video, we're going to make use of one of the unique qualities of low-tier American destroyers. And you can see that right there on both sides of the vessel, in that there are two torpedo launches on each side, both with each launch having three torpedoes. And so in addition to great guns, there's this great multiplicity of torpedoes. It's basically bristling with these torpedoes to shove into people because you know <laughs> can you think of something better to do on a late night at least when you're playing World of Warships nah. so we're going to go ahead we're going to try to make use of them but wait a minute you're not going to use the torpedoes on a US destroyer on a wide open ocean par stretch of the map are you of course I am and this sounds crazy but you know crazier things have happened but I'm going to go ahead and backpedal here because you know we're waiting for the action to start I only just started the uh, whole grinding out the US destroyer line literally like, maybe two games before I plopped into this match so I'm still coming from the uh, Japanese destroyer perspective with when in doubt torpedo it out except you know right now I have both torpedoes and functional guns so right now we're putting both of these to work against this Chester I don't know why he's ignoring the destroyer that's very fragile in front of him, but you know, well, I'm not really going to complain too hard because, as I said, I'm fragile. And most things on this destroyer are, as uh, Sean Connery's character from the Hunt for Red October movie would have said, most things in here do not react well to bullets. So I don't know why he didn't sh take the shot at us, but uh, not going to complain. We go ahead, we pick up the kill with the torpedoes. <laughs> oh, is that a battleship? Certainly, certainly we should be turning around. Nah, no shits are given. Full speed ahead. Damn the torpedoes. Wait a minute. Something sounds wrong with that. I'm planning to use the torpedoes. How? Bah, whatever. Keep firing the guns. Keep firing. And right now, I'm still not certain what's going on. This battleship is not moving. I, and his turrets are clearly traversing, but their ship's not moving. Is this guy a bot? I'm not going to ponder that anymore. And you know how live server is. Friendly torpedoes are more dangerous to you than dead enemy torpedoes. Holy shit. Nope, turn, turn, turn. Front row seat to the end of that. I demand a refund. Kill was stolen. Now we're going to turn our attention to that other battleship who we miraculously set on fire. Keep going. Hmm. If I had to pick between two targets, 
One being a low tier battleship that I can easily circle strafe, and a destroyer which can torpedo me. Well, I think I'll get rid of the destroyer that can t torpedo me, and it's relatively easy to do this because, you know, it's a destroyer. They're fragile. And right now you're seeing me just kind of use instinctual aim. I'm not really using the gun sight because I need to keep track of where those friendly torpedoes are going. Uh, low tier matches. Why? See, th these things miss by a country mile and the friendly torps come knocking on my door. Uh, and you see me accidentally switch to AP there, that's kind of a bad habit from, at least for destroyers, it's a bad habit from my Japanese heavy cruisers which have really good AP and thus you switch back to them constantly and oh is that the high caliber oh yeah damn high caliber and we're not even six and a half minutes into the match <laughs> I'll buy that one for a dollar so now we're going to go ahead and wander into this uh, capture point here and this is me commenting on the my experience from the closed beta test this isn't the original domination mode mmm this looks like conquest just being called domination and I, I guess they're trying to see if they can pull a fast one on us I don't think so I see what you did there wargaming I see what you did whether or not the rest of the people in the server have is another matter so as you can see, yeah, we can easily just pull this thing out, the I mean the USS Wix, and just start clubbing the living hell out of anything and everything that gets in our way. Because, well, torpedoes are the trump to everything, and this thing has pretty good guns. They're not as high in the alpha in with their high explosive shells as the equivalent Japanese destroyers, but just the overall quality makes it worth it. So I'm being very cautious as I plan my attack run on these enemy battleships. And yes, I'm going to again assault battleships across open water because why the hell not? And I'm trying to take stock of these allies behind me and to my starboard side. For those of you who are not quite up to date on your naval terms, that is the right hand side of the vessel. So I'm being very cautious of them because they've ha shown a great propensity to fire their torpedoes regardless of whether or not I'm in the vicinity of where their to those torpedoes will be. So I'm being extra cautious and I am now not giving a single fuck about whether I am spotted and just merrily trying to pepper this South Carolina with as much high explosive as I can shove down it per minute. As you can see we do occasionally set them on fire, cause some damage, just other utter havoc and mayhem on board his ship right now. And you're going to notice I'm going I'm focusing my fire on the one closest to the uh, cluster of friendly vessels off to my starboard side because one it is just more effective maybe we can take them down before these torpedoes that from launch from the allied 10 Ryu hit their mark but they don't look like they do much there we go ahead we put this one spread there boom nothing left of that guy follow up on a second one and we take him out for a double kill I like this I really really like this ah it's a great match right there five kills good amount of torpedo hits high caliber 
and we start taking high explosive damage from somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Where could that have come from? Oh, you be the judge. So, I'm resigned to the fact that I'm going to sink at the end of this because my damage control ability is still on cooldown, that fire's raging, and there are enemies in front of me, they're firing high explosive. Whoa, well, what do you know? Right on time. I think at this point it's a foregone conclusion that we won this match. So I won't bore you with another protracted nine minutes of engagement here. Because, yes, it really did go on that long. It's oh. horrifying thinking about it, actually. And with that, let's go straight to the damage screens. And it's no surprise that this was a very high payout match. Almost 3,000 experience. Yeah, this is with premium, you know. I t I, I'll make the admission. I bought the Turpits. It's a great ship. But that's for another video. And it was as I was recording this particular video that my suspicions during the match were verified in reading the Compensation for Damage Caused by Allies. 724 credits. Why that no good bastard of a light cruiser on my team. Mmm. He's the one who set me on fire in front of the enemy. Mm. Leaving him aside, because we don't want to dwell on the negatives too much here. Yeah, it was a great round, actually. Very high payouts. I was surprised how quickly we picked up the high caliber. Actually, I wasn't even expecting to pick it up at all. But we pick up the first blood and the coveted double strike. Truth be told, I think that that particular double strike would not have been possible if I was in, like, the Wakatake Japanese equivalent tier 3 destroyer, because it doesn't have the 12 torpedoes that the Wix does. It only gets, like, 4 or 6, I think can't remember off the top of my head. And it comes as no surprise with a performance like that that we finish his top of the team lists. And it's of note that the enemy Wakatake got away. Well played to him. He really did frustrate our battleships up to the end, but because this is a domination match, <coughs> conquest, <coughs> he just didn't have the momentum to swing the match around and pull off a surprise win there at the end. And now the very unusual damage composition screen for a US destroyer. How much torpedo damage was that? Wow, almost 83,000. Damn. Not, not used to seeing that on a U.S. destroyer. Japanese? Okay. U.S.? Mm, not so much. And I think it comes down to... I think most people just either cannot create the situations where that happens or cannot recognize when those situations present themselves. Granted, this was a very heavy exercise in seal clubbing. I will be the very first to admit that. But, you know, it... There was just something so euphoric about this match. Well, I hope that was a bit of a fun demonstration for you all about low-tier destroyers and general destroyer tactics, and perhaps how to make the transition between a purely gun-oriented style of play on your destroyers and or a purely torpedo-based style of play on your destroyers I think the best of the destroyer players out there know when to go between the two styles and how to blend them according to the situation in front of them. 
Did you see something in the video that you didn't quite understand? Or perhaps there's a situation on your mind that you'd like some insight on? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to help you out. If this video or other content on the channel is of interest to you, please consider subscribing. I have some more videos that I've been planning. I, in particular, I do have in mind some good replays for a Derpitz video to come. Please look forward to that. Once again, I'd like to thank you for having bared with me for 15 minutes at this point. Love to see you around sometime in the future, and I'd like to bid you a good day.